previously on Pastor Team. So today, we're going to study about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's actually a story po of a challenge, a difficult time. Kasi yung trial nila came and it happened because they refused to bow down. Uh, they refused to obey yung command na binigay ni King Nebuchadnezzar to bow down sa golden image na sinet up niya. So this story, sinasabi is this world na nakafocus sa success, nakafocus sa goodness, nakafocus sa blessings, is forcing the believers. Bow down. Agree with us. Amen? Um, be also, be success-minded. Be position-minded. On the contrary, the Bible declares, the Lord Jesus is your success. But what the Lord doesn't want is for you to focus on success. The Lord wants you to focus on Jesus who gives you success. I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood the ground. Kaya lang po, ito po yung nangyari. Because they stood their ground, they were faced with a trial. So, nung si Shadrach, si Meshach, and Abednego, yung story nila na yon, it is our story na you feel na parang minsan nakaka- nami-miss out may opportunity by standing on your belief. But the story ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not end there. Alright? A-advance ko po ng konti. They stood their ground, yes. And when they stood their ground, they were persecuted, they went to a fiery trial. Pero alam niyo po ba yung ending? They were promoted. And then you know, there's a principle that binibigay ni Lord. On the time of your challenge, be it because you stood your ground, or be it because you are the one who failed, you are the one who have make, uh, made a mistake, the answer lies not in seeing you able to deliver yourself. The answer lies in looking to Jesus and say, Lord, you are able to deliver me from this challenge. Tinan niyo po ito, sabi nila, na una yung declaration niya na, our God is able to save us, but even if He doesn't. The declaration of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is this, Lord, I know you are able to save, but Lord, I am giving you permission to do the saving you want for me. Kasi po tayo pong mga believers, many times we love dictating kay Lord that the Lord wants us to come to this place na I declare mahal ako ni Lord. Pero kung sakali man na hindi magmanifest yung pagmamahal sa akin ni Lord sa personal request ko, mahal pa rin ako ni Lord. Hallelujah! In the midst of the fire, the Lord doesn't want you focus on how to get out of the fire. The Lord wants you focus. Jesus is there with you. The Lord use the fire para ma-break yung bonds. The Lord says, kung may trial sa buhay mo and it's per- persisting, may plano ako. My plan, first, I will use it. The demon has planned it to destroy you, but I will use it to unbind you. This is the word of the Lord for you. And I'm declaring this for you. The greater the battle, the greater the spoil. The greater the challenge, the greater the promotion. Hallelujah! Amen. The greater the trial, the greater the success. You have been favored. And because you are favored, the Lord will always help. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Good morning, Joshua. Good morning, church. Good morning, guests. Namin po. Um, we are so happy na we are again here Saturday enjoying the Lord as we sit po at His feet to listen at His word. Amen. I declare po right now at the very start po ng ating gawain na something amazing is going to happen sa atin. I am declaring right now, I, I'm releasing that anointing na the Lord is going to move and work mightily sa atin. Na as you just hear the words of the Lord, na faith will be imparted to your hearts. You, you, you will be stirred up in believing more of Jesus and what He has done for you. And I declare na this day, something good, something amazing. Tulad nga po nung pinag-aralan natin ng mga nakaraan na 
surely goodness and mercy will hunt you down. I declare na this day, something uh, powerful, wonderful, something amazing, something that you do not expect will happen right now because the Lord loves you. Amen. And as we sit po at the Lord's feet, I really believe in my heart that the Lord is the one working. I am reminded po nung truth about the Lord na, na sinabi niya sa Bible na when we sit, the Lord moves. When the Lord, when we work, when we move, the Lord sits. And right now, I know na you are seated, you are listening to His words, and as you are seated, the Lord is going to move, the Lord is going to work. Hallelujah. Amen. Pwede po ba, can I ask po na we bow our heads and we commit po itong ating gagawing pag-aaral before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Daddy God, we are so thankful for this day na ibinigay niyo po sa amin. Lord, thank you for the wonderful weather. Thank you, Lord God, because you are here in our midst, Lord Jesus. Thank you po because you're going to use this opportunity to impart unto us faith, to impart unto us, Lord, not just knowledge, but Lord God, a revelation that will stir up our hearts more to believe po sa inyong truths at sa inyong work. I declare, Lord God, na you will back ito pong words na aming pag-aaralan with signs and wonders. Kung paano niyo po sinabi sa inyong word na uh, it is foolishness for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who, uh, uh, to the world, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So Father God, maraming maraming salamat. Ngayon pa lang, we are taking the opportunity to say thank you for the move, for the working that you are about to do on our behalf this day. We are looking forward for many things from you, our dear shepherd. At maraming maraming salamat because you're going to use yung aming pag-aaralan today para po Lord God kami po ay ma-enlighten, para po kami ay ma-equip, para po kami Lord God ay maging bold, bolder sa aming paglakad sa aming Christian life. Lord Holy Spirit, we give you all the access right now in the name of Jesus para po i-lift up our Savior in our midst. Father God, maraming maraming salamat because ibe-bless mo at i-anoint mo yung aming gathering. Lord Jesus, we are so expectant sa gagawin mong pagpapakita sa amen today. We give you all the glory. We give you all the blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Once again po, good morning church. We are so happy every week na meron po tayong opportunity like this para po tayo ay Um, magkaroon ng fellowship even online. Kahit hindi po tayo nagkikita but I really believe po in my heart na our spirits right now are united in seeing our Savior. And I'm excited po sa isi-share ko po today sa atin. I know po na ginamit ni Lord yung po mga nakaraang truth sa atin. And even up to now po yung aking heart is still swelling with the truths na na ni-reveal sa atin ni Lord. And na, na, napansin ko po yon sa aking mga Bible study nitong nakaraang linggong to na uh, I, I find, found myself ex, uh, expounding on the truth about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Today, there is another truth about the new covenant of grace that the Lord wants us to learn, the Lord wants us to to know. And I pray po na gamitin ni Lord itong word niyang ito para po ma-release yung breakthroughs na hinihingi natin. Amen. Without further ado, pwede po bang simulan na natin? Let's go right into the Word of God. Ang ating pong passage today will be found sa Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 15. Allow me po na medyo basahin po muna natin yung story para po magkaroon lang po tayo ng background. I feel na it's going to be a series kasi po nung uh, for, nung nagsisimula pa lang po ako mag-take ng notes, ang nasa heart ko is that we're going to study on the whole uh, passage 1 to 15. And then parang mag-pick out lang po tayo ng mga verse and then i-expound siya. But I found myself na dun sa isang certain na part ng passage, dun ako nilid ni Lord mag-expound. And sabi ko, Lord, how about the next truths about this wonderful chapter? The Lord says, reserve it for next week. So, It, this this would be a two-part series. I pray kung iyalaw po ni Lord. But, but I'm just excited po to share the word of the Lord for us today. Amen. Genesis chapter 18. This is the story po ni Abraham when he was 99 years old. Na from Abraham, binago na ni Lord yung kanyang name into Abraham. Um, tapos na yung kanyang pagkakamali si 
si Abraham at si Sarah, they were promised by the Lord na magkakaroon sila ng anak. But nagkaroon sila ng pagkakamali in a way na tinulungan nila si Lord. And dahil tinulungan nila si Lord, medyo nagtagal pa yung manifestation ng promise. And then this part, itong Genesis 18, ito na po yung time na si Lord binisita si Abraham when he was uh, there sa kanyang tent, nagbumuni-muni. At nung pagbisita sa kanya ni Lord, the Lord came affirming yung promise niya kay Abraham. So let's go to that story. Ang sabi po is this, Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by. Inasmuch as you have come to your servant, they said, and that inasmuch as you have come to your servant, then they said, they answered, sabi, do as you have said. Now, bago po natin ituloy, makikita niyo po rito na si Abraham daw po nakaupo sa harap ng kanyang tent. And then from afar off, nakita daw po niya yung three men na papalapit sa kanya. And in an instant, Abraham knew it was Jesus. And alam niyo po, habang binabasa ko siya, sabi ko, Lord, ganun si Abraham, ka-familiar with you. And sabi ko, naalala ko nung time na siya ipagod na pagod, Jesus appeared to him as Melchizedek. And then, I really believe po na there were moments also in his life na the Lord appeared sa kanya. And sabi ko, Father God, Abraham was living in the new covenant, um, a new covenant of grace. Parang uh, uh, a few years before, the Lord God the, na, nag-cut ng covenant kay Abraham. It is uh, the new covenant of grace. Kaya nga po, para po sa kaalaman ng lahat, the Abraham, the covenant that Abraham had was the covenant of grace. Kaya alam po nangyari is that um, Abraham was in a covenant of grace, Isaac was, was in a covenant of grace, Jacob was in a covenant of grace. Pero pagdating sa Israelites, nung sila ay nasa Egypt, after nila sa Egypt from Mount Sinai, nag-change sila ng covenant. Nagkaroon na ngayon ng pagbabago from a covenant of grace to the covenant of law. Pero after G, uh, when Jesus was born and when He died, bumalik yung covenant na meron kay Abraham. So our covenant today, our relationship with the Lord is a continuation of the relationship Abraham had. At makikita nyo po dito, Abraham knew the Lord. And sabi ko, I really believe po, I, I am reminded ng passage. Sabi po sa Hebrews chapter 8, sabi na, uh, all, all, all will know me from the least of them to the greatest. None shall teach his neighbor. Part of this covenant is that we will have this intimate knowledge of God. Abraham had that. First glance pa lang. Alam po, ako po na-encourage. Sabi ko, Lord, sige nga, padamihin mo pa yung mga moments na nakikita kita para malayo pa lang. Oh, si Lord. Amen. I really believe in my heart na darating, darating po tayo doon. It's the plan of God. It's part of our covenant, right? And I really believe in my heart na the Lord is, has been training us na Alam niyo po yun, yung uh, ibon pa lang, makikita mo na kagad na si Lord, may pinagdadaanan ka, tapos may papadala si Lord na natulong. And then, like Abraham, alam mo kagad, it's the Lord. So, nalaman daw po kagad ni Abraham na it's Jesus. Actually, the, the three men that visited him, hindi po yung God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus and then two angels. Amen? Eh, yung pong two angels na yon after nila mag-usap, para po sa kung i- Tutuloy po natin yung story. They they went sa Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus stayed behind kay Abraham. It's another famous story wherein si Abraham nakipag-bargain kay Jesus. Pero nakafocus po muna tayo rito na Abraham knew na it was Jesus. Binisita siya ni Jesus. Alam niyo po, it has been my prayer. Even up to now, sabi ko, Lord, um, hindi naman sa... Ang, pwede, ang sasabihin ko lang po is this, wag, nyong, wag po tayo mapatali. Kung sakali meron kang desire na bisitahin ka ni Jesus, na makita mo siya, go ahead. Pero please, wag mong pilitin na kailangan tangible, kailangan na uh, um, may physical manifestation. You know what? Um, medyo delikado yon. Misan, the enemy uses it para magpanggap. Tandaan niyo po, the, the enemy disguises himself as an angel of light. Pero, 
it's a, a wonderful desire para sabihin mo, Lord, I wanna meet you. And let the Lord siya ang mag-dictate on the terms how He will meet you. Amen? Um, but I love it. I love that binisita ni Lord Jesus. Ganun sila ka-close. Amen? Na Jesus binisita siya sa kanyang tent. So nung ma-realize ni Abraham yon, nagbadali siya. Tapos nung nagbadali si Abraham, sabi niya na, can you please stay? Then I will prepare food for you because I don't want you to pass me by. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? Even that, meron pong revelation si Lord na when you sense Jesus is there, have this prayer also. Lord, don't pass me by. Pa- parang this season na may tinuturo ka, let it not just pass by. Let it be, Lord, na pag, 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 pagdating mo dito, na nakuha ko lahat ng pwede kong makuha sa'yo. Hallelujah. So yun po yung nangyari kay Abraham. Ay- ayaw niyang payagan si Jesus na mag-pass by. Hindi niya alam na si Jesus, pinuntahan talaga siya. So sabi, balikan po natin yung binabasa natin. They said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Gusto niyang tumambay. Tumambay siya. Sinerva niya si Jesus ng food. Tapos tumambay siya doon. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? So he said, Here in the tent. And he said, I, it's Jesus. Right? And he, Jesus said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. By this time po, si, si Abraham was 99. Si Sarah po, uh, 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 I think 90. Amen. Well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. And po, it's worth mentioning na naging double dead na si Sarah at this time. Before nito, she was barren. Ito po yung pag-aaral natin mamaya. She was barren. At at the same time, sa pag-iintay niya na mag-manifest yung promise ni Lord, naging siya double barren. Barren siya dahil incapable siya na, na mag-produce ng offspring. Meron siyang problem sa kanyang uh, reproductive system. And then, after noon, nung dumating si Jesus, she was double dead already in terms of producing. Dahil this time, She has passed the age of childbearing. Amen? Therefore, Sarah laughed. So, yung sinabi ni Jesus, sabi niya, I have come here para sabihin sa'yo, Abraham, na yung iniintay mo, actually, 25 years, 75 years old si Abraham, na nagpakita si Jesus, at sabi sa kanya na, I will be your God. Get out from your country. I will make you a father of many nations. 75. And now, na he is 99. At numaba si Isaac was 100 years old siya. 24-25 years sinihintay ni Abraham yung manifestation ng promise. Ano yung doon pa lang po, there's a parang uh, a, a message from the Lord na meron ka bang hinihintay na promise kay Lord? Pastor Tim, hindi yata encourage, encouraging yung 25 years. Pero pagdating kay Abraham, the, the one thing na he was waiting for for 25 years, finally, Jesus was there to deliver the news and say, Next next year, according to the time of life, according to the time of life means nine months. Nine months from now, your son is going to be born. And then narinig daw po ni Sarah, kasi nandun siya sa may tent door, nakikinig siya. And then nung narinig daw po niya, tumawa siya within herself. Alam niyo po yun, yung hindi gumiki yung kanyang uh, bibig, parang par- sa, sa loob niya, kausap niya yung sarili niya. Uh, how many of us po, di ba, na nagkakaroon ka ng meditation and then kausap mo yung sarili mo, Tumawa lang si Sarah within herself. Sabi niya, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Oh, he is really God. He knows what is going on in your heart. Alam mo, tumawa si Sarah within herself. Please know, yung mga tears mo na hindi mo nilalabas, within yourself, the Lord knows. The Lord knows your inner battles. The Lord knows the doubts. Kaya nga, you don't need, yung iba na parang may dating sila, na parang um, 
kailangan ayusin ko yung declaration ko, kailangan maging maayos lahat-lahat. The Lord knows. The Lord knows kapag nag-declare ka na you don't mean it. The Lord knows kapag may may nangyayari na na um uh, struggle between sa heart mo na the Lord knows even kapag yung pag-declare mo half-hearted na you're not even sure. But kaya nga ang sabi ni Lord, come boldly to the throne of calm as you are. Amen. You can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I know na you are my shepherd. Kaya lang po, Lord God, because sa bigat ng mga nangyayari sa paligid ko, parang ang hirap maniwala. But Lord, I just want to let you know, I believe. And Lord God, kung meron man ako mga doubts, like a, a, a father that came kay Jesus one time when he was living in our earth, sabi nung, nung lalaki, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. The Lord knows it. The Lord knows that you believe, but at the same time, you uh, you uh, you do not believe. Possibly ba yun, Pastor Tim? Yes, your heart believes, your mind reacts. Yung, yung mind mo lumalaban doon sa pininiwalaan ng heart mo. Come as you are kay Jesus. He sees it. Amen? So sabi, and the Lord said, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. Ito po yung next week. Next week, I pray na mapag-aralan po natin itong wonderful verse 14 na to. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Verse 15, But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not love, for she was afraid. And the Lord says, No, you love. Amen? So, parang it was a really light conversation. Um, kaya nga po nung lumabas si Isaac, the name Isaac is laughter. And alam niyo po, it's worth mentioning, you know when the Lord has come in the house, there is laughter. You know kapag may bandage, there's strife. Uh, anything na ginagawa mo and there's lightness, there's laughter, there's joy. Kaya nga po sabi ni Lord, di ba, na, uh, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, sabi sa Romans 14, is righteousness, peace, and joy. So when there's laughter, when there's joy, when there's peace, That's when you know the Lord is there. Amen? So, yun po yung binasa natin yung buong passage na yan. Pero, sabi ko nga po sa inyo, I, I, I want po na i-pick out lang a certain passage. And you know po, it has blessed my heart. Let's go back sa verse 11. Ay, nung magkakausap ko na po sila, nung nag-offer na si Abraham ng food para po sa, kay, kay Jesus, then, nagsalita na po si Jesus. At sabi ni Jesus, Uh, sa verse 10, sabi, I will certainly return to you to the time of life, according to the time of life. Babalik daw siya. Amen? And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Then verse 11, sabi po, Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. Parang ang paraphrase niyan, they're already dead. Kung meron man silang, kung meron man silang uh, pag-asa pa, Walang-wala na. Kasi they're, yung pagkakasabi ng Bible na they're old, well advanced in age. Parang the Lord, the, the Bible presented ano ang status ni Abraham at ni Sarah. Nung time na sinabi ni Lord Jesus na you'll produce, you'll have a son on the time na they are not really able na. Alright? They are already dead. Sabi, Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. Amen? Now, the reason po kung ba't natin ito pinili, yung, yung part po ng story na to, kasi dito po tayo magkakaroon ng uh, way para masabi ko po na may backstory kasi, na banggit ko na po siya ng pahapyaw kanina, babanggitin ko ngayon, yung ngayon na nandiyan na sila, nakaupo na sila, Abraham was 99, Sarah is nasa uh, uh, 80, or uh, uh, sorry, nasa 90, 89. Uh, nung nakaupo na sila dyan, um, finally, nung dumating si Jesus, at nung dumating si Jesus, sinabi niya na, okay, now is the time, right? Next year, uh, after nine months, yung pinakiintay ninyo will now come to pass. May backstory. Ang backstory po, no, nandun po natin kukunin. Parang kailang, ginamit lang po natin itong verse na to na the Lord Jesus came sa kanila to bring good news. You know what? That's our Jesus. When Jesus comes, it's always good news. 
Amen. It's always good news. Amen. Nung na, na, nabalita nung na, na, na pag aralan natin last week, di ba? Na when Jesus was there, kay Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was good news. Na ibig sabihin na they will not burn. Nung na, nung pinagatan yung shepherd, nung nawawala yung sheep, when Jesus came, it's good news because hindi na siya mawawala. So when Jesus came kay Abraham at kay Sarah, he brought good news. And yung backstory nito, tulad po nung nabanggit ko kanina na There, there was a time po kasi na si Abraham at si Sarah, they had no children. They were unable to bear children. Even before, 75 years old, dun si Lord nagpakita kay Abraham. So you could imagine, nung the moment na sila ay mag, 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 uh, maging mag-asawa, they were already trying. And sana po maintindihan niyo po mga kapatid, during this time, konti pa lang ang tao sa mundo, the greatest success ng isang babae, And then the greatest legacy na maiiwan ng isang lalaki, tayo kasi ngayon, ang legacy natin, it's more sa name na nakuha mo, more on sa title na nakuha mo. But during their times, the greatest success and the greatest legacy na pwede nilang maiwan at ang kanilang pinaka-dini-desire is to have children. Actually nga, meron silang uh, culture na the more child you have, the more blessed you are. Kasi yun talaga ang paniniwala nila. And right now, si Abraham and si Sarah, for the longest of time, they were unable to bear any children. Ang sabi po sa Bible, ang may problema si Sarah. And then the Lord came. Nung, when the Lord came, the Lord gave them good news. Sabi ni Lord sa kanya, when he was 75 years old, sabi Sarah, uh, Abraham, uh, leave your father. Come, get out of your country, go to this land where I am calling you, and there I will bless you, there I will meet with you, there I will be your God. And then, fast forward ng ilang uh, years, the Lord came again, and this time, nakipagkat ng covenant kay Abraham. At sabi ni Lord kay, kay Abraham, Abraham, from this day forward, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. At this time, the assurance, the surety, na magkakaroon ka ng anak would be because of the covenant na meron ka through Jesus. It's another amazing story. So ito po yung back story. So 75 years old, nagpakita si, si, si Lord. Now, when I was preparing this, when I was um, uh, just uh, meditating, talking with the Lord, the Lord told me, bilang may pinakita siya sa akin, sabi niya, anak, I want you to notice a detail. Ad interesting detail. Amen? Si Sarah po, mga kapatid, sabi po ng Bible, she is a picture of the new covenant of grace. Amen? She is a picture. Amen? Sabi po, Galatians chapter 4, 22-24, sabi is this, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond woman, the other by a free woman, But he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants. Kanina ang sabi, si Abraham daw po nagkaroon ng dalawang anak, one by a bond woman, para po malaman po natin yung story niyan is that it is Hagar, the maid servant ni Sarah, mamaya po babagitin natin even yung story niyan. And then, the other by a free woman, ang binabanggit po dyan is Sarah. So meron daw pong anak si Abraham from two wives. One is kay Hagar, one is kay Sarah. Ang tawag kay Hagar, bond woman. Ang tawag daw po kay Sarah, free woman. Tapos ang sabi ng Bible is this, these things, these women are symbolic. Ano daw ang sinisimbolize nila? The two covenants. Hagar represents the law. Sarah represents grace. Amen? So, habang nagsusulat po ako niyan, nung, nung, nung backstory, the Lord says, Anak, take note. Take, uh, uh, take this interesting detail na Sarah is a representative of grace. Na, it is such a wonderful title na of all the people na nasa Bible, yung iba, dinidepict, example like si, si David, ang dinidepict niya is love, 
um, yung, um, si Solomon ang dinidepict niya wisdom si 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 Saul ang dinidepict niya error Sarah ang dinidepict niya grace and alam niyo po ba mga kapatid meron pa pong dalawang babae na the Bible represents uh, that the Bible has in the wisdom of the Lord called na sila yung representative ng grace tatlo sila actually isa na po doon si Sarah the other woman is Rachel, uh, asawa po ni Jacob. Si Jacob, meron po siya actually apat na asawa. Um, dalawa po doon yung talagang main na asawa niya, si Leah at saka si Rachel. Amen? Tapos po si Bilha, saka si Zilpa. And then, si uh, si Rachel po, at siya po talaga yung minahal ni, ni Jacob. And I, I don't know if you remember sa pag-aaral po natin about the Benjamin generation, na yung pong Nagkaroon daw po si Jacob ng mga anak dito sa apat na mga babae na ito. At sa apat na mga babae na to, 12 yung naging nilang anak. Sa pag-aaral po natin ng Benjamin Generation, we saw na yung 12 na anak na yon symbolizes the 12 gener- the different generations of believers. And then nakita po natin na Ben C. C. Rachel that symbolizes grace Dalawa po ang anak niya, Joseph and Benjam- Benjamin. Nakita po natin sa pag-aaral natin na Benjamin, ito po ang nag- nag-represent of a generation that boasts of the Lord's love for them. A generation na nakitaan ng silver cup. Ibig sabihin, the work of Jesus, silver means redemption. The Benjamin generation na nung mamamatay na si Jacob, sabi, this is the generation, Benjamin. You are a person that will dwell in the shoulders of of your father. So this is a generation that declares they are loved by the Lord, a grace generation. And then Joseph symbolizes Jesus. At ewan ko po kung naalala po ninyo na nagkaroon po tayo ng pag-aaral na madaming believers today, pare-pareho ng tatay, the Lord, pero iba-iba ng nanay. Yung iba ang nanay is law. si Leah. Pero si the reason ko bakit close si Joseph kay Benjamin kasi pareho sila ng nanay. Ang nanay nila is si Rachel. Rachel. And Rachel represents grace. Para po, ano po yun, yung panagkaroon po tayo ng malalim na pag-aaral pa na una si Leah na makasal kay Jacob, Rachel comes, came second. Law came first. And then, Grace came second. Sabi sa Bible, the first is rejected, the second is accepted. Rachel, the second wife, represents grace. So, meron pong tatlong, at tatlong babae, nakakadalawa na po tayo. Si Sarah, very clear, the Bible declares, kung meron mang symbol ng grace sa, sa Bible, Sarah. The other symbol ng grace, si Rachel. Sumunod po na symbol ng grace is Hannah, yung nanay po ni Samuel. And Hannah literally means Hannah. Ang ibig sabihin ng Hannah, favor, grace. Amen? So, all throughout the Bible, may tatlong babae that symbolize grace. They represent grace. Na parang si Lord, in all His wisdom, sabi niya, these people, these girls, They are the ones that will carry grace. They are the ones na, alam niyo po yung parang, um, para po maintindihan pa po natin, parang mga pastor. Di ba may mga pastor na alam mo, pag tumayo yung pastor na yan, alam mo ituturo niya. <laughs> pag itong pastor na to, alam mo ituturo niya. Itong pastor na to, laging magagalit. <laughs> so, alam mo na na ituturo niya. Itong pastor na to, walang ibang tinuro kundi ganito. Itong pastor na to, ganito. So, pastors represent a certain truth na nag-speak sa kanila, and I really believe the Lord has called them to preach on. Amen? Alam niyo po, inaangkin ko na na, I, I, na uh, I am one. Hindi ko po kayang sabihin na I am the. Uh, I am, actually nga po, one sub. Alam niyo po, yung maliit lang sub preacher of grace na uh, I, I pray, and Lord, this really my heart's desire na kapag tumayo ako, people will say na ah, alam ko na yung pastor na yan, he preaches grace. Amen. Um, pero alam niyo po, meron din mga uh, persecution doon na ah, Grace na naman ituturo niya. Pero 
I love it. I love na I am associated with grace. Yun po yung kay Sarah, kay uh, Rachel, saka po kay Hannah, na they are associated by grace. Now, nung nagsusulat po ako, nagpe-prepare, sabi ni Lord, anak, now that you have written that these three women represents grace, do you know what is the one thing they have in common? Sabi ni Lord, I, uh, I, I tried, <laughs> sabi ko, Lord, anong common nung tatlo na to? They were all barren. They were all unable to produce. They were all, nagkaroon sila ng hirap mag-produce ng anak. Nagkaroon sila ng hirap mag-produce. Not just mag-produce ng anak. Kasi po sabi ko nga po sa inyo, during nung time nila, ang, ang culture is that ang success nila talaga is magkaroon ng anak. Especially sa women's side. Yung mga babae during nung time na yon, Parang it is their desire, their at, parang their utmost calling in life na makapag-produce ng son. At kung sino pa yung representative ng grace, sabi sa Bible, grace is Jesus. And yung sabi po, law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Jesus, all throughout His life, nung nakita siya ng mga tao dito, nag-exude siya ng unmerited favor. Na parang pag may lumapit sa Kanya, yun, hindi, hindi niya binibigyan ng qualification yung lumapit sa Kanya. Whether you are a sinner, whether you are a prostitute, whether you are uh, someone na nag, nag, nagkamali, like, like Zacchaeus, sabi ni Lord, just come here. And you will receive the healing. Not because you are deserving, but because the Lord loves you. He was releasing unmerited favor. And most especially when He was on the cross, walang tao na may karapatan, na kayang magyabang, na He is worthy na si Lord mamatay para sa Kanya. The very act of Jesus dying on the cross, it was grace. Na He saw nothing sa atin, in us. Na wala din even promise na pag namatay siya na magbabago tayo. No, He did it without any condition because of unmerited favor. So grace is Jesus. Jesus is grace. And sabi rito, kung sino pa yung mga babae na ina-associate sa biyaya, ina-associate sa goodness, ina-associate sa favor, ina-associate kay Jesus. Sila pa yung mga babaeng hindi makapag-produce. Sila yung, they were all barren. Um, al- alam niyo po yun, yung si, si, si Sarah, sa sobrang uh, pagkainip niya, ka, uh, hindi siya makapag-produce, tinulungan si Lord. Si Rachel, na nakut siya nung, nung, nung kanyang kapatid na si Leah, dahil hindi siya makapag-produce. Si Hannah, he, she was found na, 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 na pagkamalan ni Prophet Eli na Uh, high priest Eli na drunk kasi dahil very heartfelt yung 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 prayer niya na talagang nagigrieve siya na even up to na wala siyang anak these three women who represents grace their one common trait they are unable to produce and you know po ang sabi ko is this lord parang mali kasi When I associate someone with uh, with a person that is under grace, dapat yung tao na yan blessed. Dapat yung tao na yan pag pag ang tao is under grace, yung tao na yan dapat ma ma ma, ma magaang na yung buhay. Pag pag ang tao is under grace, dapat yung tao na yan laging promoted, laging nakakaranas ng favor. Yun yung pumapasok sa isip ko. Because should it it be Lord na baliktad? Parang mali kaya ng mga pinili ng mga babae na magre-represent ng grace. Dapat dapat pag pag grace, pag pinag-usapan ng grace, pag pinag-usapan si Jesus, dapat ito yung mga tao na ang daling maglabas ng result. Pero on the contrary, kung sino pa yung pinili ni Lord na mag-represent ng grace, sila pa yung hirap mag-produce. And I asked the Lord, why? Lord, why? And the Lord's answer in a flash was this. The reason I called them of all the people, bakit sila ang pinili ko because they are the ones 
who are unable the the people who represent grace are not exemplary people the people that grace calls are not the people na maayos on the contrary the one the the, pers- the ones the persons that represent grace they are the unqualified the the unable those who cannot amen hallelujah grace made them its representative jesus picked them out not because they are exemplary women not because they are morally morally right no on the contrary the reason grace picked them because they are the ones who are disqualified Amen. You know po the reason why I'm saying this? Because madami po baka kasi. Um, uh, I, I'm just going, ano nyo po yun, yung just, just flowing in the spirit today. Because madami po sa atin have already heard grace and then heard the blessings na ganito. Madami sa atin, um, we associate, please don't get me wrong, wala pong masama na Uh, a blessed person is a person under grace. Kaya lang po, ang, ang problem is this, nalilimutan nila na it's a result of grace. It's not the determining factor where, when a person is under grace. Hallelujah, I love it. You know po, um, when you dwell in grace, when you dwell in Jesus and you trust in His unmerited favor, you will end up blessed. Pero hindi yung blessing mo yung determining factor na you are walking in Jesus. And the reason why I'm saying this is because right now, I want you to celebrate to those of you na even at this moment, you are still unable, na parang wala pang nangyayari sa buhay mo, na Lord, bakit ganito? Na I, I have believed, I have declared Jesus, I have looked at finished work, pero still, wala pa rin yung success. You represent grace. Do not question yourself. Do not allow the demon to to put this doubt sa yo na, see, What is happening sa belief mo? Na even up to now, you are unable to produce. Siguro you are doing something wrong. Siguro you are really not under grace. Because ang mga people na under grace, sila yung mga laging napopromote, sila yung laging blessed. No. It's a result of grace. Darating yung time na you will be there. Pero hindi pag ikaw blessed na, dun kasi nasabi na you are walking in grace. On the contrary, on the moment na you are still unable, on the moment na you are disqualified, on the moment na you are weak, on the moment na you, at the moment na you are still unable to produce, but you just look to Jesus and say, Lord, you are the one who will, you are my success. Now, even though it's still unsuccessful, You are in grace. You are a representative of grace. Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed. Don't be discouraged when you are barren. Don't be discouraged when you find yourself unable. Don't, da- don't doubt and ask why it's still not happening. Don't say, maybe I am not under grace. You are. Your disqualification. It's your right to declare, I am under grace. Now, I'm not saying every disqualified person, I am not saying that every unable person is under grace, but to those of you that you are not yet still, you are not yet producing, you're still waiting, but you are looking and trusting kay Lord. Nag-request ka ng, ng anak, like Sarah, Rachel, And Hannah, hindi sila tinawag na women of grace after nila i-produce yung mga anak nila. When they were still barren, they were called pictures of grace. The people of grace, the people that is under Jesus, walking in Jesus, walking in unmerited favor. Kung sakali ngayon na you are still unsuccessful, hindi pa nagba-manifest yan, doon kasi nagkakaroon po ng fight. 
Na sometimes you are thinking, Lord, what's wrong? Why is it not happening yet? What? Why? And then the problem is this. They begin to doubt themselves and say, I think there's something wrong. I think I am not really under grace. And then they're putting more principles. Siguro madami pa akong principles about grace na hindi ko pa naiintindihan. Siguro there are many principles about Jesus. No. The only principle that the Lord wants you to learn is this. Na you are unable, but Jesus is your ability. Na the moment na you see how unable you are, you see how disqualified you are, and you look to Jesus and say, Lord, I know I'm disqualified, but you are my disqualification. You are my qualification. And kahit hindi pa kagad mag-manifest yan, the moment you believe, is the moment you enter grace. I love it. You are under grace, kapatid. You are, you are moving. And you, you are right now just, you, you are already there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. On the contrary, pap, mga kapatid, now that you, you know you are disqualified, you know na, um, hindi pala on the contrary, what I would like to say is, The truth that we can see here is this. The people who represent grace are the people who are disqualified, who are unable. And actually, ito pa ang sinabi ng Bible regarding sa disqualification mo. Ito ang sinabi ng Bible regarding sa iyong an inability to produce. Amen? 2 Corinthians 12, 9-10, ang sabi is this. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs. Na hindi ka pa makapag-produce, that's why you need. Hindi pa lumalabas, sabi ni Lord, you are a success. Then you believe it, kinangkawakan mo yon, Lord Jesus, namatay ka, na parang bigyan ako ng success, pero still wala pa rin, sabi ni Lord. Take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when you are weak, then the Lord is strong. I love the Passion Translation. Sabi po sa Passion Translation is this. But He answered me, My grace is always more than enough for you. Tignan niyo po ito ha. And my power finds its full expression through your weakness. On the moment you find yourself weak, ano ang sinasabi ni Lord sa iyo? My grace is with you. My grace is more than enough. Baka meron kasi tayong thinking na kapag you are experiencing needs, you are experiencing uh, right now mga weakness sa buhay mo, then you are not under grace. No, no, no. Sabi ni Lord, when you find yourself weak, my grace is beside you more than enough feeling you. Your part is not to agree with the demon and say, oo nga, walang grace. Your part is say, in the midst ng problem and weakness, your grace is here, Lord. More than enough for me. And don't you ever dare and judge the grace of Jesus sa manifestation niya. I love what I'm saying. Even kahit hindi pa siya nagmamanifest, it is there. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't judge the grace of Jesus sa buhay mo dahil hindi ka pa promoted today. Don't judge the grace of Jesus sa iyo na hindi nagwo-work. Don't say the finished work doesn't work because hindi pa ako nagpo-produce. No. It is working. Kaya lang po may part may may Meron po kasing principle ang grace about waiting. Ang pinagawa ni Lord kay Sarah, kay Rachel, at kay Hannah, they waited. 
there's a part sa grace na to. And one of these days po, didiscuss natin, hindi po today, bakit kailangan mag-wait? Pero right now, just would like to declare, waiting has a big part in grace. Let me read po sa inyo, Psalm 27.14, sa Passion Translation. Sabi rito, Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for He will never disappoint you. Meron pa po sa Bible, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and will not faint. Amen. I, I remember po yung song, We will wait upon the Lord. You know po, ang, ang gusto ni Lord mangyari is this. You believe what Jesus has done for you. You believe He is your shepherd leading you to green pastures. Kung hindi kagad mangyari, wait. Keep on believing. Don't judge na maybe I am not flowing in grace kasi wala pa yung promotion. No. Sabi ng Bible, at that very moment of your weakness, the Bible says, the grace of the Lord is more than enough. Ibig sabihin, it's already flowing. More than enough for you. And tayo po mga believers also, another lesson. Let's not judge a believer. Pag yung believer na yan, medyo may pinagdadaanan pa, hindi pa siya nakaka-overcome. Don't say, grace is not yet flowing sa kanya. On the contrary, the moment na yung weakness niya nandyan, grace is surrounding him. The goodness of the Lord, the unmerited favor, Jesus himself is holding that person. Ooh, I love what I'm saying. May babasahin po ako sa inyo. Let me share po sa inyo a write-up na binigay po sa akin ni Ate Ria Victoria. It was binigsined niya to sa amin September 11 and she was blessed nung nirid niya to. Tapos po, ito po nung time kasagsagan po ito nung ako po ay may sakit at ako ay nagiging impatient. Sabi ko, Lord, kailan ba ako gagaling? And wow, what what very a timely message. Sinare lang niya out of being blessed. But alam niyo po yun yung sabi ko, I, I was so blessed dun sa binasa kong to na, na sined ni Atila. Sabi ko, one day, Lord, please allow me na makapagturo and I'm so glad na that day has come. And I, uh, makikita niyo po dyan, uh, pinatranscribe ko po kay Ate Grace yung write-up na yan para pagbasa ko po, makita niyo po yung, yung parang magkakaroon ng subtitle, <laughs> makita niyo po yung binabasa ko. Amen? This is a write-up po na from Whispers. Written by Brian Simmons and Gretchen Rodriguez. Okay, listen and read. Sabi po is this. Psalm 27.14 Here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for He will never disappoint you. And here's the rise, right up. The Lord They, they wrote it in a way na si Lord yung nagsasalita. And I, this is so anointed, and I would like to declare, listen the word of the Lord from anointed people who wrote this. The Lord is saying, trust my timing. The days of completion are mine, not yours. I will complete my work in you in my perfect timing. Even as my ways are perfect, so my timing is perfect. For you have said, it seems I am standing still and going nowhere. But I say over you, I am unfolding my glory upon you, even as you wait on me. I will make it happen and will show you my perfection. What often feels like an endless season of waiting is often a time of preparation. 
You must believe in things you cannot see. You must trust that even when things seem silent, I am working on your behalf. The Lord your God is telling to you. Now, I have already been working. Amen? If you judge by my faithfulness, by what you see, you aren't placing your faith in me at all. Faith believes despite the obvious. It remains tapped into me, honed in on the promises that I made. Don't let go of those promises, my love. Don't doubt my love or faithfulness because it's taking longer than expected. Steer yourself up to believe again. Today, the Lord is steering you up to believe again. Thank God for the manifested promises already. Thank God sa bilis. May mga promises na ang bilis. Na the moment you grab hold of that truth, nagkaroon kagad siya ng manifestation. Pero meron din mga promises na it's taking longer than expected. Sabi ni Lord, it doesn't mean na I am not working. It doesn't mean na it's not working. It doesn't mean na yung truth na hinahawakan mo sa puso mo is not working. It is. I am working. Pero sabi ni Lord, as my ways are perfect, my timing is also perfect. Dig your heels in. Take a deep breath and trust my timing. Woo! You are not a representative of grace kasi nagre-result na, naglalabas na. No. You are a representative of grace the moment you see you are unable and you look to Jesus and say, Lord, everything that is wrong to me, in me, you are the right thing in that in my life. You are my righteousness, Lord. You are my success. And trust His timing. Wait. Keep on waiting. Kung hindi pa nagmamanifest, instead of doubting whether tama ba yung pinaniniwalaan mo, tama yung pinaniniwalaan mo, tama na mahal ka ni Lord, kapatid. Tama na the Lord Jesus has took your poverty, kinuha yung poverty mo, and uh, yung riches niya binigay sa'yo na on the cross, it is already finished. Yung problem na meron ka ngayon is already finished. Pero sabi ni Lord, the manifestation on, even the timing will be perfect. So si Sarah, si Rachel, saka si Hannah, they were all barren once. Pero the Lord just led them to wait. And when they waited, now, this is the second principle. The first principle is this. We are called by the Lord to wait. Actually, in this second, uh, first principle pala na pinag today is that the representatives of grace, they are the ones who are unable. The second principle na nakita po natin, we are called by the Lord to wait. Pero may third principle, na even ito po, my heart is warm and I am so excited na i-share sa inyo. Yes, na-delay mga anak si Sarah. Naunahan pa siya ni Hagar. You could imagine yung frustration ni Sarah na siya yung binigyan ng promise ni Lord. Pero hindi siya mga anak ng anak. Tapos si Hagar na inisip niya na pwedeng solusyon. Actually, pagkakamali yon. Pero itong si Hagar, walang kahirap-hirap ng anak. Siya na may pinanghahawakan na promise at naniniwala kay Lord. Hirap mga anak. Yung samwa na hindi kilala si Lord. Ang bilis. Para bang true to life? Ikaw na may pinangahawakan na promise, why is it that yung success parang ang, ang bagal? Pero yung mga kilala mo mga tao na hindi naman inuuna si Lord, yung mga tao na na sobrang concerned sa success, sila suma- nagiging successful. Like Sarah. And you are a representative of grace as Sarah was. And Rachel? Si Leia, parang, pasensya na po sa word, parang rabbit. <laughs> anak ng anak. <laughs> anak ng anak ng anak. Nagdagbigay ng napakaraming anak kay, kay, kay Jacob. Samantalang sabi sa Bible, siya yung mahal ni Jacob. Siya yung promise na, na asawa ni Lord. Siya yung binigyan ng promise ni Lord. Like Sarah. Hannah. Siguro, I, I, I really believe, Siguro nagkaroon ng time si, si Hana Alam niya yung ibig sabihin ng name niya. Siguro gusto, parang like Naomi sa story ni Ruth. 
na pinalitan niya yung name niya na kasi dahil yung time na yon nag-undergo siya ng bitter experience. Sabi niya, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. I really believe in my heart na dumating din siguro to si Hana sa time na gusto niya palitan yung name niya. Ako yung favored. Dinideclare ko favor. Dinideclare ko grace. Ako yung hindi manganak. <laughs> Alam mo parang parang ano, parang true to life ng sobra na ikaw yung nagdi-declare na you're the favored one of the Lord. Ikaw yung nagdi-declare na you are the beloved one of God, pero ikaw yung hindi makapag-produce. The Lord is saying, keep on waiting. Keep on believing. Even in the midst na hindi ka pa makapag-produce, the grace of Jesus is so powerful already in your life. It is more than enough already. And Sinasabi ni Lord, just wait. Just keep on waiting. Keep on believing. Keep on looking. Dig your heels in. Pero ito po yung gusto kong sabihin. Napag-iwanan si Sarah. Napag-iwanan si Rachel. Napag-iwanan si, Sa- si Hannah. But do you know, nung nanganak na sila, finally, yung pinanghahawakan nila, dumating na yung perfect timing ni Lord. Did you know na yung anak ni Sarah na si Isaac was way, way, way better than Ishmael? Nung time sila na sila ay, uh, hindi sila magkapareho ng edad, pero nung pareho sila nung edad, nung time ni Ishmael, sabi sa Bible, sobrang hina, sobrang weak, to the point na kailangan pa yung nanay niya na si Hagar, kunan siya ng tubig. Pero nung when Isaac was of that same age, Isaac was found carrying the wood on his back. Umaakyat ng mountain. The strength na meron si Isaac kay Ishmael was so different. The Bible is declaring, those who wait on me, those na naghintay and kept on believing, the fruits that you will produce are way better do sa mga nauna na nagmadali, na nagtrust sa sarili nila, na ginawa yung effort nila. Ishmael is a picture ng effort. Si Sarah nag-effort na, na tulungan si Lord. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Ishmael. But Isaac, ang, ang ibig sabihin ng Isaac, laughter. When you wait on the Lord and the result comes, you know what? It will always bring you laughter. Alam niyo po yung madami sa mundo ngayon, yung success nila may kapalit. Yung success nila, it's not what you call good success. It's just a one-part success. They are successful in that regard, pero pagdating sa family nila, sa emotions nila, sa sarili nila, dahil ang dami nilang pinagpalit, they're only successful one part. But those who wait on the Lord, those who wait on Jesus, when you produce laughter, Si Rachel. Yes, nanganak na nanganak na nanganak si Leah. Pero alam niyo po ba yung mga pinroduce niya ng mga anak? Sakit ng ulo ni Jacob. When Rachel finally gave birth, it was Joseph, it was Benjamin. And even up to now, those two people are being celebrated. Right na pinag-aralan natin, the Benjamin generation na grabe yung pagkakatawag the Lord na the Lord deemed it na kay Benjamin sabihin na this guy this person is a love is is it's love Joseph of all the brothers Joseph dinim ni Lord na siya yung magre-represent kay Jesus na una nga sila yes but when you wait when the result when your results are grace-based, Jesus-based, waiting-based, your results will always far exceed the result of effort. Yung effort na to may, may, uh, ito, may expiry. But when your promotion came, grace-based, Jesus-based, that promotion will bring you laughter. That promotion will be a representative of Jesus, like Joseph, magnify Jesus. So we want, sabi ko nga, Lord, mas gusto ko na mag-intay. 
I may wait. Pero one thing I know, ito ang sinasabi ng Lord, kanina po binasa natin, di ba? Balikan po natin, Psalms 27.14. Ang sabi po sa Psalms 27.14, last part, yes, keep on waiting. But will the Lord make you wait forever? No. Sabi, yes, keep on waiting. For, it's a promise, it's because. It's sabi ni Lord, those who wait, this is my promise. You will not wait forever because I will never disappoint you. You who trusted in me. You who got to this point, not because of your effort. You did not trust your effort. You trusted my favor. You trusted me to work. You trusted me to lead you there. I will never disappoint you. And your product, your offspring, your result will be far stronger, better, exceeding the result ng law, the result ng, ng effort. Oh Lord, I will rather wait kasi when it comes, it's laughter. When it comes, it's able to bear the wood sa back. When it comes, it will represent Jesus. Hannah, when Hannah gave birth, he gave, she gave birth to Samuel, a prophet so mighty that changed Israel. So you want, you want your, your career to be born out of grace. You want your leadership to be born out of grace. You want your family to be born out of grace. Yung nga lang, may waiting. Keep on waiting. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Sabi nga po, yes, keep on waiting. Amen. So nung lumabas na po yung mga anak nila, anak ni Sarah uh, was able to inherit the promise. Si Joseph, si Benjamin, si Samuel. So what the Lord is saying, hindi ka barren kasi pinili ka ng grace. Baliktad. Barren ka, kaya ka pinili ng grace. Hallelujah, hindi ka pinahirapan ni Lord. Hindi, dahil pinili ka ni Lord, pahihirapan ka niya. No, na, kasi nahihirapan ka. Kasi ikaw yung nahihirapan. Kasi ikaw yung hindi makapag-produce, kaya ka pinili ni Lord. Pero, dahil pinili ka niya, pinili ka ng biyaya, pinili ka ni Jesus, you will not lose out. It's a promise. Yun nga lang po. There's a waiting period. Meron po akong Hinahanap, I think it's in the message translation, you are enlarged in the waiting. Hindi ko po kasi siya na, na isulat. Um, uh, uh, I, I think it's sa Romans. Romans 8, okay? Um, this is the last verse na babasahin po natin. Sabi po dito, Romans chapter 8, okay? Uh, verse 34? Okay. Um, intay lang po natin si Ate Grace. Romans chapter 8. Hindi ko po siya naisulat sa notes. Sabi po rito, Romans chapter 8, 24, message translation. Ang sabi po is this. That is why waiting does not diminish us. Ha <laughs> Akala mo na pag-iiwanan ka as you wait. No. It does not diminish you. Any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. On the contrary, you are and we are enlarged in the waiting. Hindi ko po alam kung next week ito po papaturo ni Lord, papa-reveal. Bakit tayo nag-wait? Malaking reason. You are being enlarged. Yung hands mo are being enlarged para pag nahawakan mo na yan, hindi mo siya mabibitawan. Na pine-prepare ka ni Lord. Sabi, we are enlarged in the waiting. We of course don't see what is enlarging us. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Are you blessed today? Amen. Right now, tagali mo na yung doubt. Akaling you're waiting and waiting and waiting. Sabi mo, Lord, ito ba talaga? Bakit parang, parang mali yata? Parang hindi nangyayari? No. The, the, the mere fact you are waiting right now. The Lord, you are in the, the process of the Lord. Sabi nga, trust God's timing. But I just would like to declare din po to those of you na naghahanap ng trabaho, don't sit sa, sa, sa chair mo. Pag sit mo sa chair mo, then wait na may tumawag. No, you, you do your part. Amen na 
um, magbaghanap ka ng trabaho, you go to the interviews, um, pumunta ka. Pero kung hindi pa rin nangyayari, then you wait. Amen? Um, there are many things. I pray na the Lord just leads you. Kaya lang po, um, masasobrahan na po tayo sa oras. But one thing is for sure. It doesn't mean na porket hindi pa ikaw bless na you are not under grace. On the contrary, the Bible declares, in your weakness, when you are found weak in whatever aspect na meron ka, but you are believing in Jesus and looking to His finished work, the Bible declares His grace is surrounding you more than enough for you. Never doubt whether the Lord is working. Never doubt if you are under grace or not. You are under grace. But secondly, the Lord is saying sa'yo, wait. Continue to wait, anak. Wait on me. Kaya nga po, I'm excited next week kasi may pinagagawa si Lord. As you wait, may pinagagawa siya na ang dali at ang sarap next week. <laughs> um, uh, talaga po kailangan po natin sabihin na like, hindi po ito pang asar pero um, it's a different topic pero tied in. Ito po sa Genesis 18 na binasa natin kanina. So, you are called to wait but the third, the Lord says, it's a promise. When you wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The Lord is saying that, that the result of your waiting, the product of your waiting is so much uh, better nung product nung nag-effort, yung product na hindi nakapaghanda. So, continue waiting. Continue declaring the Lord is good sa iyo. Continue declaring the Lord is your shepherd regardless of the manifestation. And sabi ni, ni Lord, na I will not disappoint you. Amen? Hallelujah. Can we all bow our heads? Father God, marami pong salamat for today. Thank you, Lord God, na you have stirred up our hearts. You have shown us truths. And Lord Jesus, thank you na pinagaan mo yung dibdib namin. Na Lord, in our weakness, you are made strong. Maraming salamat for allowing us to see na kapag kami ay found wanting, found in need, found waiting, you, know, you don't want us to judge na wala sigurong favor, wala sigurong grace. On the contrary, you are saying unto us na your grace is sufficient right there at that moment for us. Lord, right now, we answer your call to wait, to continue looking on you, to dig in. And Lord God, we believe, Lord, na hindi ka magpe-fail na sinabi mo sa amin na as we keep on waiting, we can keep on waiting because you will not disappoint us. Lord God, we are looking forward for that manifestation. Lord, we know that we will experience it here on earth. And Lord God, we are expectant that when that manifestation comes, Lord, it is extraordinary. It will trump any other result kung nakuha namin ito by our efforts. We thank you for today. Bless your people. Bless our day. Maraming maraming salamat. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your finished work. In Jesus' name we pray. Now God's people say, Amen and Amen. I declare you blessed, kapatid. I declare you the beloved of Jesus. I declare you walking in grace. May you your day be successful as you look to Jesus. See you po tomorrow sa ating worship service.